I'm Rai Walker, founder of Tembo, a managed Postgres company. And today I have Alexander Kortov uh, from Oriole DB as my guest. Uh, Alexander, welcome to the show. Hello. Uh, thank you very much for inviting me. It's a pleasure to participate. Awesome. Well, uh, it's, uh, uh, maybe I'd like to start by uh, having you give us a quick background, like uh, where did you grow up and what were you doing before you started working on Postgres? Uh, even before Postgres. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> Way back. <laughs> were, you, were you only like 10 years old then? <laughs> yes, yes. So um, um, uh, I, I started uh, actually uh, from web development. Okay. Uh, uh, no, uh, yes, and uh, in the, for web development, uh, Postgres uh, become my uh, favorite database management system. Uh, uh, that time, uh, uh, th there, there were basically two uh, popular open source database management system, MySQL and uh, Postgres. And uh, Postgres uh, behavior uh, looked uh, way more consistent for me. Uh, and uh, this is why Postgres become uh, my favorite. And uh, also, thing which attracts my attention was uh, uh, generalized indexing in Postgres. That uh, Postgres have uh, gist had had even that time had gist and gene indexes, uh, which you could uh, apply to different data types, uh, different search operators, and that uh, was uh, very interesting for me. Uh, and I also have uh, studied uh, for PhD in the university, uh, and I was interested in uh, fuzzy search and uh, uh, features like this. And uh, in Postgres, uh, I yeah. found uh, fuzzy ester match contrib module, and uh, that model contains Levenstein function, which defines editing di distance between two strings, number of editing operations. And I found that it doesn't work with multi-byte encoding. With multi-byte encoding. So it just compares two strings byte per byte. And my first patch was to just fix this bug. Uh, I, I actually didn't know if I could produce uh, the, the patch. I just downloaded the, downloaded the sources. Uh, Thankfully, that time uh, compiling a Postgres wasn't uh, already wasn't a problem, so I just I just have a, had a Linux on my desktop and uh, and just clone it. Uh, it pro probably probably that time it was CVS repository. <laughs> I cloned it and it wasn't difficult yeah, yeah. to locate the uh, place in the source code responsible for this function and. Uh, uh, I just have to uh, find which functions are responsible for getting a uh, length of multi-byte string in Postgres, and the uh, rest of work was, was very easy. Mm -hmm. uh, and I have submitted my first patch to Postgres, but then uh, then uh, Robert Haas uh, picked my patch to work on it, uh, to re review and commit, and uh, that time I get that it's not so easy. <laughs> this Postgres community because um, we have yeah. a quite uh, long, uh, long thread studying possible performance regressions and so on. And uh, 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 I rewrote patch as uh, this small patch many times, but finally uh, we find a way uh, when this patch not only uh, fixes uh, the problem of multi-byte encoding, but uh, also doesn't produce. Uh, noticeable overheads uh, when uh, it's a single byte yeah. uh, encoding or uh, strings just uh, uses single byte characters. In both of these cases, the overhead was negligible, and then Robert did commit my patch. Um, yeah, that's amazing. Yeah, <laughs> it's interesting. How, how many lines of code was the patch? Uh, I, I wonder, you know, like. Uh, I don't really remember exactly. You could uh, find it on the list, yeah. but. Uh, th this patch okay. should should be in in dozens of lines, probably twenty or something like this. Really yeah. small. Okay. But also, uh, I had uh, with this fix, I started to work on impro improving uh, this function, improving the performance. Uh, because uh, if you use the Levenstein function, you are typically uh, looking for 
uh, string, uh, strings which are close to, to your string, right? Uh, uh-huh. And uh, the thing is, you basically don't care about large distances. For instance, you you are looking for uh, uh, strings with editing distance three or less, and uh, that means uh, that if it's it would be four, uh, you don't care how much uh, bigger is the distance. Uh-huh. And uh, if you need only this, uh, then you could uh, uh, easily uh, not not easily, but you could significantly uh, accelerate function uh, Einstein calculation in uh, in in many times. Uh-huh. And and this functionality uh, took even more work uh, for me and Robert. Uh, but but you could use it. It's uh, Levenstein less equal. Nice, nice. Function. Well, that's great. <laughs> yeah, I, uh, I I also came to Postgres from being a web developer prior, and um, <clears throat> I realized like I've, I've realized in recent weeks actually that the reason why I I I went to Postgres and not MySQL is primarily, you know, I was re- using Ruby on Rails, which just kind of was Postgres first, and then. I, I really didn't like PHP. Hopefully you weren't a PHP developer, but you know, the LAMP stack had, you know, MySQL and PHP together. And I always just like, uh, I don't want to go anywhere near anything near PHP. So, um, that's really not a great reason, but it's just, uh, it's just the fact. <laughs> yes. Uh, and probably one of the uh, great feature I have discovered in Postgres in early days was, uh, uh DDL transactions. Uh, so that if you need to do a database schema migration, you can wrap all the changes into transaction. And if something go wrong, you can roll back. Yeah, that's And uh, it's, it, yes, yes, that's just amazing. And uh, it's interesting that uh, uh, even uh, uh, old and mature database management systems uh, like Oracle or uh, MS SQL Server uh, lacks of this functionality. I, I'm not sure about the present day um, but at that time, definitely, they all were, were lacking, and this was very, very useful. Yeah, that's, that's great. Um, so uh, you've you've built, you know, obviously you started with that first patch and, and worked on other fuzzy search stuff. Um, right. I, I, ha, have you built any, uh, have you worked on any Postgres extensions? Um, yes. Um, or Yes, yes. I, I, I continue to, to work on Postgres. Uh, then uh, I have uh, found that uh, I have uh, I get known with uh, Oleg and Theodore, uh, who uh-huh. was uh, in, in Russia con- Russian contributors of uh, Postgres, and I get familiar with uh, their work. Uh, some of uh, their work I already know, uh, Gist and Jin, but for others' work, and, uh-huh. uh, it was interesting for me uh, that. Uh, we could accelerate also search for like patterns. Not just perfect okay. patterns, but imagine you look in something because it could be in the middle of the string. And okay. uh, and uh, there were that time uh, PG-TRGM module, but at that time it only supports uh, trigram similarity search uh, using indexes. But I found that it's pretty easy if you decompose a string with three grams, it's pretty easy to implement like search. So you could just extract three grams from the like patterns and uh, search for them. And uh, f- things that uh, three grams uh, are extracted all over the string, so you can find uh, this substring anywhere. And uh, I don't know. <laughs> and at that time, I would say my feeling was just great so it's just amazing so you could uh, with quite small patch uh you could uh you could uh, teach uh database server with some amazing uh, advanced functionality and uh that plan and you will i get even more encouraged uh when uh i i'm i'm i would be sorry if i am confusing with names uh hubert uh, uh, I I don't know. The guy from blogger from Poland who was uh, posting yeah. uh, to the planet PostgreSQL, uh, waiting for, and he also posted uh, waiting for this feature. 
like you like sports for yeah. PG TLG. Uh, th this was uh, w one of them, one of my first patches. Another thing uh, uh, that uh, I have uh, during my PhD research, I also uh, researched um, speed algorithms for RT. And uh, I have uh, found that uh, I have found a more uh, advanced algorithm. And uh, I have uh, pushed uh, this algorithm to Postgres Core and to PostGIS. Uh, that take that they took time. Oh, I bet. Uh, yes, because uh, yes, uh, communities are quite conservative, uh, but uh, it was also good. Yeah, great. Well, I want to talk about Oral DB, but before we do that, I, I was thinking, let's uh, you know, are you paying attention to the whole vector search? Since you spent so much time on, you know, Postgres search uh, features, or I don't know, at least some time, um, I'm curious: Are you kind of tracking what's going on with, uh, you know, vector search and uh, very yes, much? Yes, yes, yes. So, 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 so that's, so that's interesting. <laughs> that's yeah. an interesting subject. Uh, yes, uh, while I have researched the uh, split algorithms, I have also experimented with cube contrib model, which uh, supported. Uh, uh, basically, uh, multi-dimensional uh, uh, rectangles uh, of uh, uh, different number of uh, dimensions, up to one dimensions. And um, uh, what I have found is that uh, if you have low uh, di dimensionality, uh, two, three, four, or five, uh, then uh, when you are producing split, your split will be good for one dimension, yeah. but uh, uh, almost don't differentiate other dimension. Uh, so so no, you, you can imagine this if you have a uh, two-dimensional sp space uh, filled with uh, points and you need to split them into two rectangles, there is a two, just two good way to do this, uh, split vertically or horizontally. Oh. All other ways, you rectangles would have a huge overlap. Uh, but uh, thing uh, changes uh, when your dimensionality increases. Uh, there is a uh, so-called Gutman quadratic split algorithm, and this algorithm actually do clustering. So it just tries to uh, uh, find a, to to divide this uh, set of points into two clusters, and it doesn't work well for low dimensionality, but uh, for uh, high dimensionality of space, it becomes uh, better uh, than if you just pick one axis and split in this dimension. And th that, that was uh, interesting for me. And uh, I got familiar with the uh, curves of uh, dimensions. Oh. Uh, so that uh, if you have low dimensionality space, you can have uh, some guaranteed and uh, quite, go quite good search performance, right? So uh, imagine uh, the best example is a uh, uh, unidimensional space. You can index this with just B3 and you have some guaranteed or, uh, or logarithm N time for search for, for point request, <laughs> right? Oh. But uh, when you have high dimensionality, that becomes a problem uh, and uh, uh, Uniform random data, which uh, could be good, uh, which you could uh, handle very well with low dimensionality. In in high dimensionality, it becomes almost unindexable. Yeah. Uh, so if you have uh, one thousand of uh, uh, dimension vectors, and you need to search for similarity, then search in uniform data uh, would be. Uh, almost uh, impossible to accelerate um, because uh, you can't identify which particular dimension could give you a match. You could just uh, uh, eat just cumulative results of cumulative results of all dimensions and uh, it's almost Im impossible to accelerate. And, uh, he, and I have uh, participated a bit in uh, improvement of PG vector. And uh, uh, with uh, some uh, uh, developers of Superbase, we really found uh, that uh, uh, 
indexing methods, if they apply it to uniform data, then they give nothing. So indexing methods for uh, when you have a lot of dimensions, they based on some uh, clustering. So the, uh, so uh, the idea is to find uh, uh, how to say find uh, the the law in the uh, distribution or, or ununiformity of distribution and then exploit it. And this is how uh, in indexing works. And uh, and uh, uh, there are different inter interesting methods for uh, for indexing multidimensional space, but I think the favorite is HNSV method. Ah, and uh, and that's mm -hmm. and I have read uh, about this method and uh, the scientific paper uh, way before this AI hype. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay, yeah, uh, ten years ago, and that and that was interesting how far this matters from all others. So it's uh, very uh, self. Yeah, it seems like, you know, like just vector search is like just on, it's like on the exact edge of search and uh, this, you know, the, the uh, LLM AI, you know, it's like you said, it's kind of blending both, both sides. Um, well, that's cool. So um, I wanted to obviously chat, chat about Oriole DB. I, I imagine, are you spending, trying to spend a hundred percent of your time on Oriole DB or is it, it it's probably hard to, it's, I mean, it sounds like there's lots of great things happening in Postgres to distract you from, you know, your own, your own yes. work. Um, yeah. so the thing you like, <laughs> vector search definitely distract me and uh, with this AI hype, it's hard to not be distracted. Yeah. Yeah. I know for everybody. Uh, but yes. And and the, the thing? yeah, I was, I was gonna say like, I would just love to like kind of have the top, uh, you know, top three or four things you're trying to accomplish with with Oriole maybe, and and maybe give us a, a progress report, you know. Yes, yes. But b before this, I'd like to to mention about how I use AI in my work. Oh yeah, sure. Uh, so uh, uh, I have written the uh, blog post: "No more vacuum, no more bloat." You may be aware uh -huh. it was on yep. top of can use. And interesting that uh, I have mostly generated this with ChatGPT. So I just pick, uh, uh, I just wrote the uh, short short item list and ask ChatGPT to write me a blog post. Then I have corrected a little bit. Uh, then I uh, uh, wrote uh, some uh, some graph, some graph. Then add some graph. Ask ChatGPT to add another paragraph with them. Uh, and then it was done. <laughs> and yeah. I was curious that uh, I, I expected that I would be uh, revealed and blamed for this. But actually, the comments I, I get was, oh, th this blog post is so much well written. <laughs> I know. I know. It's funny. Like, it, I, I agree with you. Like, I've written, you know, I'll take just like notes. Um, like, for example, here, I've got like a list of 20 questions that I'm trying to ask you during this, uh, uh, you know, this interview, possibly ask you. I guarantee you if I sent this list of 20 questions to chat GPT and say, Hey, make these questions better. It would, it would crush it, you know, <laughs> give me all kinds of much better questions. But <laughs> anyway, uh, yeah, it's, it, I, I agree. It's, um, people who aren't using it are, are really missing out, uh, on, on a great assistant, you know? So, uh, yeah. Yes. All right. So, so, so back to Oriole, like what, what are the top three or four With things? Oriole, you're... Uh, I'd like to first, uh, say about, uh, the thing which uh, bring me to to the oil uh, when I have uh, uh, studied Postgres, it was uh, just like a magic magic how MVCC works. So you can run uh, multiple session and each se in parallel, and each session will uh, uh, have its own uh, snapshot of the data. And that was just amazing, and uh, I was very interested w what is under the hood. Uh, but uh, how, how this worked from user size was uh, perfect, but I uh, always wondered how uh, how it implemented internally. Uh, because uh, when you're in Postgres, when you're doing an update, then you just uh, have to mark the old tuple and insert the new tuple in the heap. Uh, and uh, if hot update is not uh, applied, 
then you also have to insert all the index tuples, even if if indexed values are not updated. And uh, I uh, and I wondered if we could do this better. And uh, I think I have this background thoughts uh, for years. So I have studied how MVCC is implemented in uh, uh, in MySQL as, and then how it's implemented in Oracle. And it was it was very interesting for me to get how it's it's implemented in Oracle because I heard that Oracle have a uh, block level undo lock. Uh, yes, um, and. Uh, and then I have uh, thought how, how it could it be on a block level uh, because if two transactions modifies the same uh, tree page and this page got splitted and then one of transaction uh, could be uh, roll it back, uh, then it's uh, it's not linear list of of log records which could you, you should could just apply one after another because if you need to. Uh, roll back some change which was before the page split you need to do some adjustments with it uh, and then i understood that i need to to go deeper and get uh, how it works um so uh, and uh, and then i have uh, i then i learned uh, more things how i have had log working and, and so on and uh, I think in 2017, I have started to work on uh, design of my own storage, uh, which uh, uh, which could wor work around uh, the boss of the m most of shortcomings which I see in Postgres engine. Uh, for sure, uh, there is uh, there is no uh, plain wins. Uh, in some situations, this engine would work worse, but um, I would just like to design uh, to design some new trade-off uh, which could be um, better in uh, the typical situation. Uh -huh. And uh, I can uh, highlight uh, highlight some uh, things in uh, AudioLDB. Uh, so uh, the first thing which it, it is fighting is blood. And in order to uh, eliminate blood, it has undo lock, so if you update a row, then uh, you just have to add a new version of row into the undo chain. Uh, and uh, you only need to update indexes uh, if uh, if their values are updated. Huh. Uh -huh. And also uh, indexes are versioned, versioned trees as well in AudioLDB. Uh, I I have heard that it is so in Oracle, and I found that, that this is a very attractive idea. Uh, thanks to that, index only scans index only scan uh, becomes very very simple, uh, because uh, you, your secondary index is uh, already uh, already contains uh, all the information, and you doesn't need to uh, look into any in, in any uh, secondary structures, and. Um, in, because I have heard that in Postgres index only scans index only scans uh, is amazing until you run in some problem because if you have some intensive workloads and so on uh, you might have a significant part of visibility map zeroed and your query could get into trouble mm -hmm, mm -hmm. yes th that also could happen and this is why i found that if secondary index are version it that's attractive idea and RLDB have a mixed undo lock containing both uh, row level and uh, uh, block level records and the uh, uh, block level uh, records uh, allows uh, to handle some uh, changes like uh, uh, pay, uh, like eliminating of uh, dead tuples of uh, the page. So, for instance, your page contains some tuples which are deleted but still visible for some transaction. And using a uh, block level undo lock, you can issue a new version of this page and get rid of all uh, dead uh, rows and uh, reclaim the spa their space. And, but the transaction which need old version can... Uh, Traverse page level undo lock and uh, find uh, the tuples yeah. that they need. Got it. 
And another so thing to eliminate bloat uh, is automatic uh, page merging. So, uh, so uh, anyway, if even you have undo lock, it could happen that your workload is so that uh, you have a lot of sparse pages. So you you have a lot of data inserted, but then the uh, the data was deleted. And OrioDB supports automatic merge of uh, sparse page to uh, eliminate blur. Okay, and you you had some question. Yeah, yeah, I was good. I was good. I, I was just remembering that you had you had like a, I don't know if it was a, it was a blog post or a presentation where you like you know here are the ten worst things about Postgres. I don't know the exact phrasing you chose, but uh, yeah, basically here are t ten problems with with Postgres oh, and, mm -hmm. and uh, yes, how many? Yeah, that was a blog post of uh, Rick uh, Benson. Uh, I, uh, I hope I I spell the name correctly. Uh, yeah. Uh, and uh, yes, I found that was a quite popular uh, blog post. Uh, the first popular blog post is definitely Uber blog post about why they move uh, from uh, uh, Postgres to MySQL. But okay. uh, this uh, blog post from uh, Rick uh, is uh, very, uh, was, was very interesting for me uh, because uh, uh, the issues uh, he highlighted uh, were very uh, good was very good fit to my vision and to okay. think which I'm going to improve uh, with Oriole DB. What what percentage? I, I, you'll probably never be done with Oriole DB because products are never finished. But like, how how's your progress been through your you know your target uh, initial list of things you wanted to accomplish with Oriole? Um, are you making good progress through that, or you know like give us a progress report? Yes, I think I'm making a good progress, and but currently. <clears throat> Uh, the main uh, the main target is not to uh, add new features or handle more things. The current uh, target is uh -huh. stability uh, to get more users. Uh, so it doesn't work to have uh, amazing products if uh, nobody uses. And uh, um, I would say that uh, database world is quite uh, conservative yeah. uh, because uh, people. Obviously, people doesn't want to, to don't want to lose their data, and uh, this is why before using some uh, new database technology, uh, you need to ensure that uh, it's uh, really stable and mature. And th this is uh, the main yeah. challenge for new database uh, management system or new storage engine, and especially when it's OLTP and uh, OLTP currently mailing the targets yeah. OLTP. Uh, because OLTP is uh, typically the source of your data, right? It's uh, where your business operation happened. Uh, for instance, OLAP uh, could be not so important, right? right? So you you pull your data uh, from OLTP system and put for to OLAP for analysis. And if it will disappear in OLAP system, you can just repeat right. the procedure. But that doesn't work yeah. <laughs> for... LTP, which is the initial source of the data. So this is uh, the main difficulty, I think. Uh, and But we already did a very good work uh, with the team, a very good work on uh, eliminating uh, the yeah. bugs. Uh, uh, but uh, we we definitely need more uh, better yeah. testers. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's, um, <clears throat> it's a big challenge. It's similar for us as well, but like you you have to create enough differentiation to get people to want to try it, but you, you can't go so far away from, you know, you're, you're, like you're saying, the further the distance is from, from what they consider stable, the, the riskier it is, but um, you need to get us, uh -huh. if, if you're too close to the same thing, there's not enough value to, to do the switch, right? So it's a, it's a tricky catch 22 that you have to, um, you have to do something a little bit dangerous, uh, to get the attention, uh, if it's if it's too close, then people will be like, ah, you know, if it's ten percent faster, who cares, right? You know, if, uh, yes, 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 exactly. This is why I am highlighting the cases where OLDB is in times faster, or even dozens of times. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, so, uh, so you, you've have you have you now released um, kind of uh, the stable candidate? You said you need more testers. Is that that's kind of your stage now? Um, yes, yes. Yeah. We, we are currently discussing with our team and advisors when we can make market release candidate on, on the release. It's, uh, at some point, uh, this is uh, just uh, 
uh, how to say this is uh, at some point this is decisions of the will so there is yeah. no uh, strict strict procedure uh, you can go through and say okay your product now should be better or your product now should be generally available you uh, you just need to decide for yourself yeah make the, make this decision imagine all the risks yeah it was funny I'll, I'll tell you a quick story about that with with my previous company astronomer we we um we we were just going we were 0.1.2 0 0.3 we i think we got to like 0 0.17 and it was like there there was nothing big happening in any release that would cause us to say oh this sh this should be the 1.0 and then we are also thinking like um this is one of me thinking this because I was like, let's just make the next one 1.0, goddamn it! But uh, the, you know, like we let's 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 save the 1.0 for a big marketing, you know, push, you know. And I think that that's a um, I don't I don't know that they ever did it, you know. Like we waited so long that we never <laughs> had a a 1.0 um, of that platform. Uh, by the time we got to you know, it was like, oh, let's rewrite it, you know. <laughs> and so um, yeah, I think I think it's. It's a tricky thing to ship, but I'm a big fan of shipping early and often and just, you know, just mark your thing as an RC candidate. It doesn't matter uh, if it's, it, it, it will attract more attention with that RC dot, you know, than a zero dot. <laughs> yes, 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 so. yes. Uh, uh, it, it's, yes, uh, actually the numbering the version is a marketing. Uh, so <laughs> you can is, find yeah. in the shop, uh, the price would be for the, the good would be $20. But uh, you, okay, you go away, you come back, and now it's uh, thirty dollars crossed mm -hmm. twenty five dollars. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and yeah. and, uh, the, and uh, one of advisors I heard about version numbering was uh, never number your uh, if you have new product, never number your version one point zero point zero. Nobody yeah. will uh, trust this yeah. stably, so you should number something like one point three point eleven. <laughs> yeah, well, that's I'm I'm a, I'm kind of a a big fan of of Calver, you know, like uh, the, if it, where the version of the, your software should be like how many releases like it's twenty three dot whatever twenty twenty three and here's our sixth release in twenty twenty three and that kind of gets rid of all of the the traditional Semver, you know, like uh, <laughs> stuff. But um, it's again that's kind of hard to do as well. Um, well, I, I had a bunch of extra little questions I want to ask you, um, just just to get to know you a little better. But uh, like, um, uh, you know, if you had a magic wand that you could add any feature to Postgres, you know, and like tomorrow morning we wake up and it's there, what's what would it be? You know, uh, what's the most important thing, or um, would you be most excited to see added? I, 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 my my question it could sound uh, I don't know probably selfish, uh, but. Uh, I have a patch set <laughs> to improve uh, Postgres Stable Access Method API, and uh, I would like. Uh -huh. uh, and yep. this patch set definitely needs some work. And uh, if I magic went, I would like uh, this work to be yeah. just done, and everything is, is perfect and in the Postgres core yeah, perfected. And that would uh, uh, make OrioDB become yeah. a pure extension. But not only that, I think uh, it could. Uh, uh, clear the path for more table access method implementations hmm. got it that's good that's a great one um and uh, one thing uh, if you have a few, few minutes okay one, yeah. one thing about uh so uh the postgres extensibility is probably uh the idea which comes from uh postgres early design and uh, remains postgres uh, differentiation feature uh -huh. uh, till now because all our our the ideas from Postgres design uh, today it sounds weird and it's not <laughs> not the uh, but extensibility is so yeah yeah I think it's I definitely think it's a uh, honestly I, I I always just thought MySQL and Postgres were just two different you know just the the extent that, yeah I didn't realize how much more extensible Postgres at least tries to be and has been and how many extensions exist for it you know once you start looking at that list it, it's pretty pretty amazing all the work that people have done to to extend it um uh what is there anything would you say about postgres that almost nobody agrees with you about like do you have any an opinion that's like controversial or just that you're you get it's hard for people to agree with you about hmm. um I pro pro probably uh, I, I i don't know 
uh, this, <laughs> this opinion. So there are opinions uh, we, where we have disagreement in community, uh, but I can't remember uh, the opinion which uh, leaves me uh, alone yeah. with that. So uh, pro- pro- probably not. Yeah, yeah. It's there, there are opinions where I appear in a minority. <laughs> yeah, but not, but not more. Yeah, a lot of times that's just because you don't understand everything yet, right? You know, people come in with a hot take, and then, like, yeah, you know, the mailing list will educate them on <laughs> on the other factors that. Uh... Yes, yes. So there are disagreements because uh, you uh, because we are writing patches to Postgres, uh-huh. and uh, we understand these uh, patches as improvements. Right. But actually, uh, there is never uh, a pure win. Yeah. I mean, if you achieve something, you always lose something. That might be not obvious, yeah. but I don't know. So if you are adding too many SQL commands and your parser get complicated and parser state machine cannot fit to processor cache and get slower and your source code also becomes <laughs> be- becomes bigger and harder to understand yeah. and so on. And and uh, and finally, we are just a group of people which need to make some decision of will of where to go. Uh, no, no, no way is a clear win. We are trying our best to don't discourage existing users, but even the best offers of them, uh, even with best best efforts of them, uh, there are some for disproven. Yeah, <laughs> for sure. Oh, you. At the end of the day, we need to negotiate and make a decision. Where where can people find you online? And uh, in particular, like, what's the best way for them to get involved with uh, testing Oriel, you know, Oriel DB? Mm-hmm. Yes, uh, any, any person can reach me via email. Yep. Uh, and t- testing Oriel, uh, you just go to GitHub, uh, download and compile sources or even uh, easier go to docker hub and get the docker image uh, and uh, go uh, just go experiment with your data and your workload and uh, raise an issue or discussion and share your experience yep and and and, and refresh us one last time like where, where are the use cases where oriel is gonna outperform you know vanilla postgres most most dramatically i guess yes um so the uh, the situations are uh, when you have uh, a lot of updates, mm-hmm. uh, very update intensive workload, then order DB could out outperform things to undo log. Yeah. Uh, another case is uh, huge multi core machines machines, and order DB uh, eliminates uh, a lot of bottlenecks and and can perform uh, in times faster. And uh, uh, also, OLDB implements uh, a role level right ahead lock. And uh, if you have a, a huge uh, right ahead lock stream and you need uh, geographical replication, uh, OLDB can also help a lot. Awesome. Okay. Great. Thank you. Uh, yeah, if there's anything else you want to share, uh, feel free. But otherwise, uh, it was great chatting with you. Uh, <laughs> uh, no, no more from me. Thank you very much. Uh, for inviting uh, it was a uh, very very lovely and friendly talk uh, with you.